Hey, so this is gonna be a series of video on factoring numbers. So I'm gonna start with just saying that factoring and computing the discrete logarithm are kind of tied together. If you can uh, compute the discrete logarithm modulo a certain number, then you can factor that number. And that's why you're gonna see algorithms like polar row or NFS that are used in both, uh, both of those problems. But we're gonna focus on factoring numbers. When you have a number that you want to try to factor, first thing first, check if it's a prime number. Because if it's a prime number, then you're just trying to factor the number for nothing. How to check if it's a fact, uh, prime number? Use a probability primality test, a probable primality test. Because a probable primality test might tell you uh, with a certain amount of success if a number is prime or not, but it will tell you for sure if it's not a prime. So the first thing you do is use that test and it will tell you if your assumptions that it's not a prime is correct. And then you can start other algorithms to factor the number. So the first algorithm you might want to start with is called uh, trial division. And that's the most naive way you can factor a number. That's just taking the first n primes for a small n and try to divide your number by these primes. So for example, start with two, uh, divide the number with two, and if it works, then hey, you find a factor, two. Uh, then three, then five, and etc. Until, until it doesn't make sense to use that because it's time consuming and it only works for small numbers. But at least start with that because it might very quickly reduce the size of the number you're trying to factor by, by finding very small factors. So polar p minus one, how does it work? Well. First, let's remember Fermat-Little theorem. So remember, if you have a prime p, you can take any number uh, number a that is coprime to p. So let's write uh, a and p equal one. That means they're coprime. And the order of a modulo p will be p minus one. Oop. This is true if a and p are coprime. So if p is prime, that's true for any a. It actually works also if you have any multiple of p minus one, right? So for any uh, k, such that p minus one times k uh, is the power of a, we will get this uh, this same formula, and we can write it out uh, exactly like like this: minus one. Uh, equals p times r for, for some r, right? So this is interesting because if we have a number n that is equal uh, to p times q, that happens, right? Well, you take this number a and you try to find a multiple of p minus one and you take the GCD of this value that we, we have now, which is equal to p times r, right? with n, which is equal to p times q, and their common, uh, so this is greatest common divisor, well, will be will be p, right? And so that's one way of finding uh, one of the factor. So that's the trick of polar's p minus one, but that doesn't work all of the time. Uh, this works especially well when you have p minus one, uh, which is a composite made out of uh, very uh, small numbers. So uh, let's, let's say p1 to the power e1 times p2 to the power e2, etc. And that works very well when for any pi to the power ei, uh, we have a bound on this, let's call it p. And this is because the usual algorithm will go like that. And, and by the way, this is called uh, p minus one is called b power smooth, right? So the algorithm usually goes like this: you're gonna take a random number, let's say, let's say a, and you're gonna take the prime two to the power s two, and we want two to the power s two. We want s two such that two the to the power s two is approximately equals to b. All right, then we take three, the next prime, and we do exactly the same. We want three to the power S3 approximately equal to B. 
and we go I don't know until we either hit B itself or the the closest prime number to B before B and we calculate all of that and if P minus 1 is in there if P minus 1 is 3 times uh, S3 minus 1 for example times 5 then it will be there and the rest will be the K here and it will have a multiple of P minus 1 and then just by taking the GCD of that value minus 1 and N we'll find our prime P so it's a very simple algorithm usually people will use it uh, with B equals 10 to the 10 uh, has been used to find digits up to 66 digits I think numbers up to the, uh, 66 digits and that's uh, that's a pretty good algorithm that you would want to use before you use uh, for example ECM which is the elliptic curve method or also called Lenstra's factorization algorithm which is basically polar, uh, polar p-1 used in elliptic curves